Well, George is here for the start of episode 45 of Regen Rovers. He's having a little adventure on my desk, as usual. Don't know how long he's going to stay. How, are you off already? You had enough already, George? He's just exploring the microphone now. He's probably going to turn it off and this whole video will be silenced because of him. Anyway, let's, let's get on with the episode. So as you can see, the stadium expansion has been completed. Yeah, <laughs> 1,000 extra people can fit in the Regen Rovers Stadium. Apparently it can be expanded to... Stop attacking my face. 6,170 in the future, which is nice. So now 4,085 people can fit in the stadium, but only 771 of them are seated, strangely enough. So there's a lot of space around... Uh, the stadium, I guess, that with, with no seats. I thought we needed at least a thousand seated, maybe three thousand seats. I don't know. Would, would have been nice if we had more seats anyway, but we don't. We have to put up with uh, 771 seats. How have you guys been anyway? I've I've been okay since the last episode because literally it's been about half an hour. Well, more than half an hour. About an hour, I suppose. I've played through some games, ready to go. I'm just trying to record a few episodes over the Christmas period. I'm not away for very long, to be honest, but I just thought I'd get some stuff done. As you can see, Margate in the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. That should be a win. We are actually unbeaten since the last episode. As you'll know, we did draw against Eastleigh and Halifax in the last episode. Bit disappointing because we lost points from winning positions. And we actually went on to draw the next two games. 0-0 against York City. Sivzelis by with great performances, as usual. Then a 1-1 draw away from home against Torquay United. Brady Chick saving us a point here today. They scored in the second minute. Brady Chick came on and managed to get the equaliser. Here's Chris Scott going down the left, putting a ball in. And Brady Chick finding the back of the net. You'll notice he looks a little bit different. And that's because... We've had uh, another new signing come into the club. Uh, Neil Stone has joined the under-23s. Two-star current ability player. Another midfielder trying to just find the best midfielders possible. And he uh, runs his own hair salon and barbers. And he decided to give all the lads a free haircut. So there's been a few makeovers in the team. You can see Jack Young, different haircut. Sivzelis, looking, looking rather nice now with that new hairstyle. He's still got the, the creepy orange eyes, but... The haircut's rather nice. War has gone for like a Andy Carroll type look. Danny Bai, looking smart. Howcroft has just gone, I mean he's shaved most of his huge hair off. Still has no cheeks. But yeah, it look, looks nice I suppose. Patrick Dibber, gone for the same hairstyle as Howcroft. Dion Mills is bold. Um, he's He had a problem. He went to the hair salon and he said, I'd like my hair to be dyed purple. Unfortunately, his hair reacted badly and he's lost most of it. So it's a bit unfortunate for good old Dion Mills. He does look about 95 years old now, unfortunately. <laughs> now, the real reason behind these new hairstyles is thanks to this rather wonderful man that creates kit uh, skins. He's created this skin, the Vitrex skin, but he also creates this hair pack every, well, the last three years he's created it. And they just look a lot better that one doesn't really but most of them look a lot better than the actual football manager hair he puts a lot of time and effort into this and he's he's actually gifted this to me because at the moment at the time of recording this video um it's not publicly available i've put a link to his facebook group in the description below and you can actually donate to him if you'd like it early but he will be releasing it to the general public soon i'll link the download when it is available but yeah there's some nice nice hair in there Orford looks rather smart, doesn't he? Handsome fella. Chris Scott. Ah, that's very nice too. Hollywood style. So yeah, Brady Chick's gone for this sort of... Well, effectively, he's he's gone by his name, Chick. He, he's allowed a chicken to poo on his head by the looks of it. Anyway, back to the results. Uh, yeah, good one would draw against Torquay. And we followed that up with a very good 1-0 away victory against Fylde. You can see three away games in a row. So tough run of games. And Bradley Berry, the, our top goal scorer this season with another goal to win us this game. It was against the run of the play. They're all over us, to be honest. We didn't play particularly well in this game, but Bradley Berry running through on lovely three ball from Dibber. And we won that game. Then a really convincing 4-1 win against 23rd position. Hampton and Richmond, who were promoted last season, their one player that scored got a good rating, but everyone else pretty awful for them. For us, 
good performances all round, apart from Jack Young. Uh, Bradley Berry unfortunately got injured, so he's out for about 12 days with a head injury. But you can see Chris Scott came on and um, Brady Chick came on and they changed the game, the two substitutes, getting all four goals for us. They took the lead. Chris Scott came on for the injured Bradley Berry and got the opening goal, which I cannot view for some reason. What is going on here? Let's just look at the goals. This is the first one for Hampton and Richmond then. Good, good strike. Blasted into the back of the net. This is our equaliser from Chris Scott. Warren back into the team because Watalasub has not been brilliant. And Tim Green came on into right wing back role because Halcroft's not been very good this season. And Tim Green actually managed to get assist and assist and assist, hopefully not assist, because we don't want him out injured as well. But Drury with the assist for this one, Scott with a simple finish. Good to see Drury getting an assist. We then saw Brady Chick put us into the lead in the 48th minute. Tim Green with the cross in, and it's a lovely finish from Chick. He then got his second of the game and the third of the game for us. This Brady Chick skipping past his man and find, finding Drury and then managing to head it home there from the Drury header back across the face of goal and then Chris Scott got his second goal of the game so to give us a convincing 4-1 victory Drury with another did he get three assists today it's only gone down as two assists but still very good performance from him on the left hand side up front didn't get a goal but overall a good performance from him if we just look at the squad you can see top goal scorer four goals for both Chris Scott and Bradley Berry Berry's out injured again. Assists for wise Scott and Berry both have three. They're both performing very well. The average rating's not the best, but they're performing well. Brady Chick's got three goals as well, mainly off the bench this season. Spencer Drury, two goals and two assists. And Craig Palmer is back. Uh, he was injured, so perhaps he will play today against Hampton and Richmond. Hampton and Richmond? Ebbsfleet, sorry, in a day's time. Now then, today's Player Diaries. <laughs> We have to focus on club captain Danny By. He's back with a bang. He's managed to put in some good performances for us, especially against York City. Really outstanding man of the match performance from him. You can see he made 27 interceptions in this match from that central role. Now, Danny By is interesting. He doesn't really have a huge number of touches on the ball doesn't really have to pass it around a huge amount as you can see there but he's all about the the aerial challenges 16 aerial challenges many of which is in his own penalty area especially in the six yard box quite a few up the pitch though from I guess long goal kicks he only missed one header in this game you can see six key headers is exceptional let's just have a look at this one on the 77th minute mainly from corners I guess he's heading them away he's getting in there in the six yard box heading it away I think I've got him to zonally mark the six yard box and it's working well because he's just knocking the ball out when necessary he doesn't make as many tackles as his defensive counterparts like Reese Walker uh, but he's all about the interceptions really and, and he, uh, look 27 interceptions all over the pitch that is magnificent stuff from him in the next game 7.1 solid performance from him you can see 17 interceptions once again brilliant stuff from him if we just have a look actually managed to have two shots as well unfortunately both of them were saved or wide if we look at his average position you can see He's, he's oh, we're going from right to left in this game I presume he's not too deep um, I've got the defence on an average line really without the ball there he is with the ball there he is it's a bit of, a bit of a difference he doesn't have very many touches those are his touches across the pitch they're quite sporadic actually aren't they he's, he has lost possession quite a few times they're probably from long balls up the pitch though to be fair he's gained possession 21 times in this match though which is quite impressive. Another really good performance from him against AFC Fell, keeping a clean sheet. 7.5 average rating. Eight, once again, it's all about the interceptions. 19 interceptions he managed to make. If we look at them in a bit more detail, there you go. 19 interceptions. He only missed one, and he managed to block one shot as well. Did make a couple tackles in this match. Let's just have a look. At, let's have a look at. Let's have a look at the one in the penalty box because it's always a, a brave thing for a defender to go in with a tackle in the penalty box. This was on the 15th minute mark. Let's have a look. Long ball forward. Here's Hasselbank. And, yep, yeah, it's, it's just solid. He got him in the corner, really. Got, had help from Halcroft running back. 
and there was nothing that, that the striker could do there to prevent by from winning the ball four key headers once again as well all in the six yard box probably from corners and he won most of his headers as you can see and then lastly against Hampton and Richmond which we managed to win 4-1 7.1 performance again he's just been consistent apart from one pretty awful game I think this season he's played very very well there's his aerial challenges 20 headers won he only missed he only lost two headers no tackles in this game, like I said, he doesn't really make many tackles. Didn't make any fouls, he managed to win a foul. Interceptions-wise, 24 interceptions all over the pitch. He's just everywhere at the back, intercepting the ball. It's brilliant from him. Anyway, brilliant performance from Danny Bai, and that's why he was our Player Diaries featured player today. The under-23s have been magnificent this season. You can see they've not lost a single game in their Group 5. They're top with 19 points. Lee Orford, top goal scorer. Dale Wall, second top goal scorer. Both of them being kept out of the team because they're so, we've got so many strikers, haven't we? It's a bit ridiculous. We've won 5 1 in our recent game. Orford with a hat trick. Deal Mills got on the goal, goal scoring sheet as well, which is nice to see. Pretty unstoppable. Under 18 is not so good. But we've got a very strong under 23 team now because of all the players that I have. And I'm dropping certain players down it to play in the under 23s to keep them fit. And it's going very well. So Ebbs Fleet United today, the team that prevented us from hitting from getting into the playoffs last season. In hindsight, that was probably a good thing because it would have been a little bit lacking in League 2, wouldn't we? It might have destroyed us financially. would have been forced to go professional, I suppose. We're going to this game, fifth in the table then, 21 points, four points behind Lincoln City, who are winning the league. We've never beaten Ebbsfleet. I really would like to get revenge. Bradley Berry's injured today. So, I'm going to play Orford there. He's scoring goals in the under 23s. I think he deserves a chance. I'm also going to I'm going to stick with Jack Young there. He's only got one goal. He's not got a very good average rating this season, but he's going to come alive one of these days, isn't he? I'm actually what am I talking about? I think we have to go with Craig Palmer who is back from injury. He has played reasonably well. He's got one goal, but he's just been injury hit so far his his time at Regen Rovers. So, I'm looking for him to be a bit more get like, some consistent playing time under his belt. We're sticking with Warren and Green as the wing-backs because they've played very well in the games they have played this season. Charlie Lofts has moved into the back three. I just can't seem to find someone to play well there. It's very frustrating. It just doesn't seem to be working. Maybe it's because I'm playing a stopper. Maybe I should just play normal... Ah, central defender stop. Let's go with that. Lofts can play. Let's see how that works. We've got three strikers on the bench, but I do like to to change the strikers quite a lot in a game and Chris Holmes can play defensive midfield if need be so he's quite a useful player to have on the bench wish me luck I am pretty determined to get a win today in a live com because last couple episodes a defeat two draws surely today we can get a win and get revenge against them we've never beaten them in this series in eight games they are my bogey team they came with three at the back pretty attacking tactic three up front effectively though they're playing an attacking midfielder but look two players pushed forwards rather than playing them as the wing backs they're playing them as wide midfielders. Let's see how we cope against this very odd looking tactic from Ebbsfleet. Please smash that like button as ever. Be much appreciated. I think George has probably gone to sleep now. He wanted to make an appearance at the start. Now he's gone off for a nap. Don't blame him really. Look at that beautiful green tunnel. So I'm assuming this is the only seated area in the stadium and everything else around is standing area, I suppose, in our 4,000 no, it's not 4,000 seat stadium, it's got a capacity of 4,000. I wonder how many people have turned up today then. So this is our first match in this increased capacity. There's over 200 people that have season tickets now as well. Here's Palmer, back to Marlowe. Can we get a 20th minute goal here? Marlowe through to Palmer, nice play, it's back to Dibba. And that's a brilliant opportunity for Drury, who takes it. Third goal of the season. He's hit and miss, isn't he? He can be very frustrating at times, but... He scored for the second episode in a row. This is Palmer playing it into Dibba. And Dibba with another assist. He's playing very well, our guy from the Congo. Can we hold on to a win, though, for once? I'm going to leave it on attacking. If I change things, it just seems to go wrong. 
Danny by slams it up, but it's given away, but it's coming to Tim Green. Will he take his opportunity and dislodge Howcroft as our main right wing back? There really is a distinct possibility because he's playing well. Here's Orford. Orford! Oh, he's hit the crossbar. Really unlucky. He's scoring goals for fun in the under-23s. Playing as the deep-lying forward in Bradley Berry's role. It's, no, it's, it's a pretty hard role to play. Bradley Berry's done very well this season in it. Let's keep it up. We're doing well. Maybe I could play Palmer there instead. Or he prefers to play as a target man. So maybe we should play him in the old Brady Chick target man role in this second half. Brady Chick's still scoring goals despite the fact he's only really coming off the bench these days. He's doing very well. Calmly encourage the boys. And I am actually going to bring Brady Chick on for Orford. And we're going to take Craig Palmer off for Jack Young. Palmer hasn't quite done it today. I've, I've still got high hopes of him. He's got 15 on finishing. I think he can be a useful player for us. Tim Green not playing too well on the right wing back role today, but I, we've not really seen anyone do anything badly, and we are dominating the game in terms of shots. Not in terms of possession, but we, we don't really we don't really control games, do we? And it's creeping towards full time, but is this is this the chance where the upper, the time when Ebsfleet will ruin our day? And because we oh, please don't do this to me, Ebsfleet. You've, you've beaten me and drawn against me so many times that slammed wide. I'm leaving on attacking because I don't want anyone saying you should have gone. You shouldn't have gone counter or defensive pool. Now we now they're going to score and everyone's going to say you should have stayed defensive pool. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Not. It's a bastardly thing. I'm going to bring Chris Scott on for Drew. We've made all three striker substitutions, even though the rest of the team's pretty knackered. I don't like to change the back line when we're playing well defensively because I'm just worried that it will just dislodge their their rhythm. But Ebsfleet, maybe they're turning it up towards the end of the game here, looking for a an equaliser. Siv Zealous holds on to that. I will turn off Be More Expressive. Tim Green. What was that, Tim Green? My friend. You're not going to be my friend in a minute if they score from this. This is bound to be a goal, isn't it? Oh, bloody hell. Why? Why can't we beat Ebsfleet? Why can't we hold on? I'm going overload. I didn't, I didn't have time to click overload. Oh, it's so frustrating. Why can't we hold on to a lead? Whatever I do, if I go counter, if I go defensive, if I leave it on attacking, we concede. Siv Zellis maybe should have done better with that with that save as well. He did palm it into the net. It was powerful. Gebs fleet! Blah. I just, I despair. I don't understand why we can't beat them and why we can't hold on to a lead. Not another bloody draw. It's the story of the series. Another draw. How many games have we drawn? <sighs> In fact, I can probably tell you if we look at my profile. We've drawn 107 games. We've won 85 and lost 62. We've what? We've drawn more games than we've won. We've drawn more games than we've lost. This is blah blah. That wasn't English, but you know, I think you get my drift. The thing is, I leave it on attacking, thinking, let's try and get a second goal. Maybe when I'm 1-0 up with 10 minutes to go, I should go defensive. Maybe I go defensive too early sometimes, and that's my issue. I don't know. I'm sure there's going to be loads of you guys offering advice, thinking you know best. And maybe some of you too. Then again, I tend to pick up enough points for us to do pretty well over an entire season, don't I? So I'm not all that bad. It's just some games. It's just really annoying. As Orford scores for the under-23s again. Uh, Lawrence is thinking about terminating the... They're like, I'm not going to terminate it yet. Okay, at home to Bury, favourites to win the title before the start of the season. They're still favourites to win the title. We're actually bottom of that list now, 1,000 to 1. Bury are fourth, we're sixth. We can go above them with a win today. Why did we draw against Ebsfleet? They're in the relegation zone this season as well. We've got no, we've got no excuses. I'm taking Orford out. We're putting in Brady Chick and we're playing a target man. Palmer is going to come out for... Let's do it. Let's play Jack Young. And I'm going to keep Tim Green in there. He didn't play very well in the last game, but let's give him another chance. I think I need a, a, a midfielder on the bench, to be honest. Let's put Phil Sawyer on the bench. I'm going with this then. We're relying on Brady Chick, the big man. We love him. I don't even know if he's that big. He's just I just imagine him to be a huge machine. It's going to be tough today against a team that really should be in the football league, but they've dropped down. And now they're playing at the same level as Regen Rovers. No Paul's big day out feature today, I'm afraid. I've never been to Bury. 
ever been to Ebb's Fleet. Okay, that's boosted the team a bit. Sing the, the Regen Rovers National Anthem, Green Sleeves. And here come Berry straight away. Looking dangerous. Uh, to be honest, I'd be happy with a draw today, but oh, I'm sick of draws. I'm sure you guys are sick of draws. You want to see me win? I want to see Regen Rovers win a, a game live. Bye. Slams over the top for Spencer Drury's through. He should be finishing. The keeper's made a good save, though. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. A little bit disappointing. Clear-cut chance. Half chance, apparently. It wasn't a clear-cut chance because there were defenders descending on him, I suppose. Here's Reese Walker into Marley. This is nice play on the edge of the box. Can we get it into the box and p create an opportunity? Here's Tim Green. It's into Marlow. It's into Dibber. Jack Young. Lovely play, Tim Green. Tim Green wins a corner. Nice play from him to win that corner. Now, Marlow, can you produce? Whips it in. Dangerously headed to Jack Young. Knocked away. And Barry can maybe escape. Frantic start to the game. It's died down a bit now as Warren slams it up the pitch for Jack Young. Slam back up the pitch by heads it. Marlow Dibber. This pretty pacey play here. Drury back to Lofts. What was that? But Marlow picks it up anyway. It's into Chick. It's back to Marlow. It's into Tim Green. Nice play this. Dibber. Chick. Can't get the shot away. Reese Walker. We're relentless at the moment. Tim Green. Whips a ball in. Oh, Chick scores at the second attempt. He hit the post on the first attempt. His fourth goal of the season. We've now got three players that have four goals this season. Once again, the strikers are sharing the goals around as I'm once again trying to work out who to play up front. Although we have had a lot of injuries, which is mainly the reason why I'm alternating the strike force, to be honest. Nearly all the strikers have picked up some sort of knock this season. Green with a, a corner straight into the arms of the keeper. Thought it was going to be a decent one then, but Coleman caught it. Do I leave it on attacking? I think I have to, don't I? Here's here's Lofts. He was moaning about lack of first team football for a while, but now he's in the first team. Hopefully he's happy. But now Lawrence, of course, wants first team football, and he might have to go back to Lincoln if I don't start playing him. Here come Barry, looking dangerous. I think this is going to be 1 1. It is, it's an own goal. From Danny Bay of all people. It's crossed in. It's a dangerous cross, to be fair. It comes off. The, the, well, Walker is the one that kicked it. It must have hit Bay on the way through. That's a bit unlucky for Danny Bay. It wasn't really his fault. Game doesn't think it's his fault. It kind of thinks it's Charlie Loft's fault for maybe not clearing it at the near post. We were the better team in that first half, but somehow it's 1 1. <sighs> the defence seems to capitulate on camera, don't they? You guys just see so many weird mistakes from my defence. Jack Young's not playing particularly well today. I'm actually going to swap him and Drury round. I'm going to play an attacking midfielder alongside a normal midfielder. We won't have a defensive mid ball winning midfielder in this half. Marlowe can push forwards a bit. Plenty of highlights in this game. Quite exciting stuff. But here come Berry. We don't want them coming forwards. We want to win the ball back. Warren misses the challenge, but Lofts easily mops that up. What's he going to do? Pokes it up the pitch to no one. Dibber does well, but Marlow can't collect that. And this looks a bit dangerous for Berry right now. Close down, guys. Come on, get in there. Win it back. Good opportunity for Berry. It's just these crosses from that, like the edge of the six-yard box that do me all the time, I find. Fortunately, we survived that one. I think I'm going to have to bring Jack Young off. Is Jack Young's days numbered? He scored one goal this season. Is it over for him? We keep thinking that though, and then he comes back and plays really well. But Chris Scott's going to come on for him. He's not... Jack Young's not had a good season this season so far. That's quite clear to see. His average rating's down. He's not playing particularly well in the games that we've seen. He did score a goal, but... What's going to happen to him? I don't know. This looks dangerous. Berry, it's a good save by Sivzelis. Sivzelis hasn't been perfect this season. He's put in some solid performances, but he's not looked completely uh, safe hands today. It's Drury. Almost found the back of the nets over the bar from him. Drury's had a poor game as well. Going to play Orford. As we're going to have two target mans. And Dib uh, Marlowe's going to come off for Sawyer. He will play as an advanced forward. 
Advance forward, advance playmaker. Not another draw. Frustrating. That's a word I say a lot in videos. If you want to count how many times I've said frustrating this series, it will be off the charts. We're going to pump it long. I should have been pumping it earlier in the game to our big men. Brady Chicken Orford playing as target men now. Five minutes to go. Can we get a goal? I don't think so. It's going to roll to the end of the game. A couple minutes to go. This probably will be the last highlight. As Berry. Ooh, that was almost an opportunity for them. But Sawyer does well, the substitute. Here's Dibber up the pitch to Orford, who does very well. He's given the ball away. Come on, Orford. You've been doing exceptionally well in the under-23s. And then you do something like that. Doesn't impress me. That don't impress me much. Yeah, enough of that, Paul. Oh! Oh! They hit the post twice. They should have won, they should have won the game there. Somehow. I thought it was actually only once they hit the woodwork. It looked like they hit the post twice. But uh, we, we get lucky there. Very lucky. And we finish 1-1. One, one. Two 1-1 one, one draws today. I did promise you I'd win and I didn't. So forfeit. I have to eat Sylvester. Oh. Yeah. Maybe not. Poor Sylvester. We're eight points off the top now. Lincoln are having a very good season. Maybe that's why they loaned me Lawrence, because he's not actually that good and doesn't fit into their title-winning team. Eight draws. We've only lost one game this season, the same as Lincoln, but eight bloody draws. Let's us down again this season. What is wrong with us? Look at all those draws. <sighs> it's enough to make me cry. Up next, we have Margate in the FA Cup. We should be getting through to the first round. So I'll probably show the first round game again, especially if we get a big team. So keep your eye out for the next episode. Thank you for watching today's two draws against Ebstreet and Berry. <laughs> Hopefully this dinosaur t-shirt t -shirt can cheer you up. It's wonderful, isn't it? What a t-shirt. I will see you in episode 46, guys. Yeah.